everybody welcome back to the channel I know it's been some few minutes um, I haven't put up too much content I've just been working enjoying the cars uh, update on the Hawkeye I got ended up finding a urban gray metallic STI trunk it's all painted I went and picked it up a few weeks back um, it looks good I still got that limited trunk that was on here originally uh, I got that put up uh, actually it's put in the car so I'm gonna hold on to that it's a actual limited trunk that was originally on the car so but I wanted to keep it all original of how it was supposed to come and that STI wing makes this car for me and that was something I was def desperately trying to find um, so we got that that's on the car obviously the motor Still sitting on the stand, uh, 15 STI. So what I actually want to work on today is I do want to redo those fuel lines the way I wanted to run them. I'm actually going to switch it from the parallel system uh, back to a series system. Um, I just don't like the way the fuel lines are all ran. Uh, it gets me a little uh, worried, just excessive lines. I don't need a fuel line to be melted through or whatnot from just not having to need all those extra lines so uh, I want to change it up so I'm basically just gonna have the feed come straight out of the line and I'm gonna have it come into probably this side here and then come across this one's gonna jump over to this rail and we're just gonna go right back into the regulator um, and I can plumb since I'm gonna make that new line I'll make that new line to go to the ethanol sensor that'll be probably somewhere in here um, but we'll see when we go I, I don't think for the power level this car is at running it through the flex fuel sensor is going to be an issue but um, we'll see how everything plays out if I need to I will just run the feed straight into this rail come over here jump back this way come out run across go through the flex fuel sensor here and into the regulator if I need to do that that might at least buy me a little more safety so that I don't have to worry about that being a restriction for the fuel um, but like I said the power level that it's out somewhere around the 500 or so is where it's gonna stay I'm not planning on pushing it anymore uh, one other big update I can't really touch too much on but I have new software that I'm running on this car it's not gonna be open source anymore um, it is going to be tuned a different way, but it will be speed density. I'll have the flex fuel option, um, be able to still run my fuel pressure sensor and whatnot and uh, monitor all that. So that did change from where I originally was. So I've been messing with the new software, trying to get used to it. And uh, yeah, so cars like on 24 pounds on pump gas right now. I'm just getting my pump gas tune dialed in and then I have my ethanol tune already dialed as well so I can switch it back and I can have it blend automatically between them so but I do need the flex fuel sensor in there so that I can actually have it set up to blend based on the content because as of right now I was just obviously running the two individual maps um, so that's something that I'm going to be working on I got uh, connectors and loom and whatnot for they've been here for a week a couple weeks or so um that i'm gonna wire up and get set up for the ethanol sensor the fuel pressure sensor and all that so uh we're gonna try to walk through a couple little basic installs of setting all this stuff up i don't know how much i'm gonna get done tonight but we'll see i'll just it's been a while since i got a video together and yeah, I need to get back on this. I've been putting it off and procrastinating for a while. So um, we're going to see what else is left on here. But definitely no, not shy of any kind of workload. I definitely have a lot on my plate, aside from the vehicles, just in personal life. But um, yeah, we're going to try to get some stuff set up. So right here I got a, I got one of the TGB plugs. Uh, I'm going to be using uh, the factory harness on the actually one of the Cobb uh, pre-green speed flex fuel kits 
I'm going to modify it. So I needed this one. Uh, this right here is for the flex fuel sensor as well. I have a, a newer style flex fuel sensor that's originally like comes on like Volkswagens and whatnot. Um, that's what I'm going to be using. It was originally from a, delish, a delicious flex fuel uh, system. Um, so I had bought some of these flex fuel components from basically eBay from crash cars and I pieced together my own kit because I knew what I needed to do. Um, and this is actually a fuel pressure sensor even though I have that one that's on the car that wire harness is actually from a kit that I have for the 08 STI so I'm gonna make a new harness that'll jump from here to the TGV connector and that'll be a new jumper harness this will be the ethanol sensor and I can jump it to the TGV connector on the other end so uh, yeah I'll Go step by step. This is the push lock hose that I needed from Radium. I bought, I think I bought like 10 feet just to make sure that I have enough of 6AN, um, which is what the system's going to be 6AN since I'm using the factory hard lines. Um, there's no need to go any bigger than that. So, um, yeah, got some loom to put on the harness when I start putting the wiring together. And uh, yeah, we'll see. We'll see how uh, everything comes out. But um yeah so we're gonna go ahead and uh start getting this stuff together all right so since i was talking about i'm doing a custom kit um, i am utilizing um, Cobb's little module because it'll take the frequency from a flex fuel sensor and convert it into a zero to five volts which is what i need for or anyone would need for open source Obviously, this is how the pre-green speed Cobb setup worked. Um, the new setup it uses a different module, so um, the sensor will still work, and the module, which would be this piece, they have a new design that takes that voltage, still zero to five volts, but it inputs it into your ECU a different way. Um, so since I'm using a different method, whether you're open source with the die mod, this will work. Um, even like standalones, I believe you can actually just input straight out of here. You don't even need a zero to five. You just got to set it up correctly so it picks up the uh, frequency. Um, but I wanted to show you since I'm piecing this together. Um, this is the design that I'm going to be putting on the 2015 SDI. Let me see if I can zoom up. Um, but this is has Volkswagen part number right here. Uh, there we go. You kind of see it with the light. Uh, it's a Continental sensor. Uh, this is the one I'm going to be putting on the car. This is the older design, I guess you could say, uh, more traditional that most of the flex fuel kits are going to be designed to use. You can tell because they have this brown connector, um, three wires. They're all basically the same. Uh, you got a 12 volt. You got a 12 volt input. You can kind of see on this one. Let's see if we can zoom up. So you have the uh, output which is, let me see if I can get my finger in here. So right here, you got your output, which takes your zero to five volts. Uh, you got your ground and you got a 12 volt input. Um, so that's basically how both of them work. This one just has uh, one, two, three on it, uh, right there on the connector. Um, I can put up, I'll put up a diagram of the pinouts. They should still be the same. They should be inputted exactly the same as this one. Uh, just a different connector, which is why I picked up this connector here. Uh, this is the connector for this newer style um, where I'm going to reference as a Volkswagen flex fuel sensor. Um, but um, the older style is what's on here um, already pre-wired in here, this connector. Um, but this sensor is pretty big. I don't don't really want it on the 15 STI, but this I will be using on the 2008 hatch when I do the rotated setup on there. So I'm going to be cutting this. I bought this used off of someone for a few bucks because they're pretty useless nowadays unless you know how to use it. So I'm going to cut this connector off and I'm going to go ahead and be splicing this new connector on so this can plug in. Uh, like I said, it's basically just 12 volts. Uh, ground and then the output signal which goes into this module and this module puts it back out through a TGV connector right here um, You got your two wires in here. Uh, you're basically taking Like I said the input into one of the pins 
and I believe it's going to grab the ground from your TGV as well to ground this so it can power up. Um, and this original one right here, so come to find out this is from a 2015 to 21 WRX uh, pre green speed flex fuel kit. So this O2 connector is normally where the original kit grabs the 12 volts from, grabs it out of your um, O2 sensor for the heater circuit. Uh, I got to cut this off. This connector is different for the 15 and the 08. I cannot use it. So I got to put um, the proper, uh, basically just 12 volts. I just got to put 12 volts into it. Um, you can grab it several different ways. I think I've been debating. You can either grab it from the O2 sensor like this. Um, you can also grab it from the mass airflow sensor if you are speed density, which I am. Um, I might do that. Um, or the newer pre... Uh, green speed flex fuel kits they actually grab the 12 volts from the boost control solenoid um so basically even though it's two wires here they basically just butt right here in this single it's a single wire so i just need to take this one wire and put 12 volts to it to uh supply power here um so that's what i'm going to do i'm going to end up cutting this off and i'm just going to find 12 volts um i'm probably leaning towards the master flow sensor since i'm not using it that one wire that's 12 volts um, is more than enough. It's safe to put it off of it um, and it'll power everything up and I think that'll be a lot better. I can run this one wire um, all the way over to the mass airflow sensor. I have uh, pins for that connector when I made the jumper harness um, to do the speed, um, speed density. So that pin is empty. I can just cut this, crimp a pin on it and pop it right into the mass airflow and that would supply my 12 volts. And like I said, this is gonna go here and the TGV connector is going to get cut off. I'm not going to need, I don't need a jumper. So this is going to go, probably just cut these off here and go straight into the harness um, and input my signal through there. Obviously the pressure sensor is on the other TGV itself. Um, the good thing is the pressure sensor uses five volts. So you can actually just steal the five volts, the ground, and then the input all off of the TGV, which is how I have the sensor on the 15 STI right now. Um, so you don't need anything special other than literally this connector straight into the pressure sensor, three wires, and that's it. You plug it in and it works, um, which is how I've been monitoring my fuel pressure on the 15 STI so far without any other special uh, software or anything like that. Um, uh, it's gonna obviously input a voltage but the voltage is available to convert it over to PSI. It's a linear uh, equation, which is how I programmed my um, open source um, to be able to convert that over into an actual PSI so I can log it. And that's how I found out that the fuel pressure was dropping. Um, so it's super, super good thing to be inputting in your car. If you don't have TGVs, it's definitely something you should probably at least hook up three wires, a couple connectors. And, um, and it's just safety to have there. You can always monitor it and resort back to that. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and piece this whole setup together and we're gonna make uh, our own flex fuel kit for the 15 STI. And with the uh, new software that I'm running, <clears throat> it utilizes a zero to five volts like the old Cobb um, setup. So I'm gonna go ahead and run that. This is the flex fuel sensor. I'm going to do exactly what I said, put the new connector on this module. I'm going to input that zero to five volts on one of the TGVs. I can assign that TGV to uh, through the software to monitor it for ethanol content and use that to transition from my pump gas to my E85 tune. Um, so that's what I'm going to be working on. I'm going to go ahead and cut the wire, crimp the new ends on and get it ready. Um, I'm going to do most of that right now and then I'll find a location where I can put this and that'll determine where I'm going to actually mount this sensor. So this is an old uh, uh, delicious tuning uh, flex fuel sensor, I believe, based on the design of the bracket because it looks like this one here. Um, I don't know what it came off of, but uh, it doesn't really matter. They're all, all the sensors are universal. So I'm going to probably take this bracket off and just mount the sensor somewhere on the engine. If I have to make a new bracket, I'll just make a new bracket to mount it somewhere. But I'm gonna find somewhere that it can reach with this harness here. Um, like I said, this this other long one needs to get all the way back to the mass airflow sensor. So 
I'm kind of limited on where I can mount it, but it looks like it's going to be mounted somewhere near the throttle body. It's going to be the go-to on this. So, yeah, that's the basic rundown, but I just wanted to touch on these are your two style connectors. So, easy way, obviously the brown connector. This is the more traditional one that a lot of companies use. Um, I believe it's still a Continental sensor. I'm not 100% on the brand, um, but this is the newer style. It's more compact, so I kind of like it. Um, I don't know. Comment down below if you guys have a preference of which one you think works better or has the least problems. Um, I haven't really heard either way, but either way, the sensors aren't too bad. They're about 100 bucks. so if you need to get one. But like I said, I'm going to go ahead and set up the 15 STI to go ahead and run off of this sensor, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, modify this harness and get that all ready. But uh, yeah, I just wanted to touch on those two designs. Um, whatever one you have, you should be able to switch back and forth. Um, obviously, the connector is different, but it's the same basic concept, 12 volts, ground, and then the output um, is going to output whatever it needs to output, and my module is going to convert that to 0 to 5 volts for me. Um, so yeah, that's what I'm going to be working on right now. So let's get started on that. All right, so I just cut the connector, but just so you see, uh, we got both the wires here. It's basically interrupting the 12 volts, comes down, and this is the little crimp here. So they both just crimp together right here. It's just taking that 12 volts, interrupting this signal, sends it right back out, taps into it just to power the module. So I'm gonna go ahead and leave this off, and we're gonna figure out exactly where I want to tap it. Like I said, I keep debating on if I should just get the rear O2 sensor connector or go into the mass airflow sensor. And like I said, I'm more inclined into going straight into the mass airflow sensor, just tapping into that 12 volts there. So um, we'll see if I'm going to do that. But uh, yeah, I just wanted to show you how this little sensor works and pretty much all the kits are exactly the same. I get a 12 volt here. They're stealing the ground from this wire right here. One ground and one's the input wire that you're sending back to the ECU. And then this is the three wires for the actual flex field sensor. 12 volt ground and the input or output I should say of the flex field that's going to go into there that comes into this input. So yeah, so I mean you can make anything work for anything. So even though the kits they're made to be plug and play in all reality, they can be used on any car. I can put this on any different make, model, whatever that's designed to do a zero to five volts, and you can make it work. So that's what I'm doing, which is why it was not important of what model this came off of. I just wanted the cob specific because it's zero to five volts. So um yeah, so this is for twenty fifteen to twenty one. O2 sensor. Um, if anyone wants it for, you know, custom stuff, let me know. Um, I have no use for it. I'm not planning on getting any 15 to 21 uh, WRXs, um, but we'll see. But um, yeah, so we're gonna go ahead and start working on this one. But I just wanted to verify this was doing what I was saying. Single wire, just 12 volts. So, all right, all right let's jump over to the uh, ethanol one. All right, so we want to make sure we don't mess this up since all the wires are the same color. Obviously, it'll make it very easy to mix up the wires. So on this one here, we got the output, we got the ground, and we got the 12 volt input. So we're going to do one by one, and the pinout on this style is going to be the exact same in the same order. So 12 volts down here, ground in the middle, output on the top. So I'm going to go ahead and cut one wire and uh, put the terminal on it pop it into this connector and just work my way up um, just to make sure that I get it in the right order so and the connector goes upside down on this style where this one obviously points up so we're gonna go ahead and start putting that together and we're gonna go ahead and do one at a time so let's see now, I mean I guess I could depin this but I don't know if I really want to mess with that Mm. Have my little screwdriver. Ah, 
you know what, we'll just cut, we'll just cut it. So put this back. Make sure I get it in the right order. So we got 12 volts right here. So this is my 12 volt wire. I'm gonna cut it as close as I can. I can always get new pins. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull this over and. Alright, so I'm going to strip a little bit out. Alright, let's get one of these connectors. I'm going to put the sleeve over it. And I got some crimpers that I bought when I got these connectors. I don't know how well they're going to work, but we're going to find out. So we're going to go ahead and slide over this sleeve. Put that down. Got one of these terminals here. And I'm going to test this out. I hope you guys can appreciate it. I'm going to go ahead and do the first one right here. I'm not even going to do a test one before I send this video out. So, um, should be, should be this dot right here. Actually, what? I think that's going to be upside down. Let's spin that around. Make sure we're grabbing copper there. I'm going to spin this around. Try that. Oh, it definitely didn't work out the way I wanted on that, but we're going to go ahead and make it work. So, it kind of did one, but it didn't do the other. So, we're going to try to correct that. And I am definitely not the go-to on all this different style of connectors and crimpers that I'm supposed to be buying to use for each. So I just bought this one to test it out and uh, give the pull test. It feels pretty good. So now we're going to go ahead and slide this in. And we're going to get that crimp on there. And we'll go a little, we'll go a little on the larger side. This is not that as important. Just to hold the sleeve on there. There we go. Looks like we're good to go. And, like I said, we're going to go use this again. Make reference. This is here. So this one's going to go right in here. And you should hear a click if you get it right. It might be upside down. Let's flip it. There it is, and clicked in. There's the first one. Got my grommet in there, it's all ready to go. So we're gonna go ahead and repeat that process all the way down. This is the connector, I'm just gonna move one wire up at a time, and we'll get that all taken care of. All right, number two. Yeah, don't forget these boots when you're doing that. So it's going to keep the weather out of it. Alright. That one's ready. Let's grab another one of these connectors. And let's get it ready. Alright. Let's drop 
this right in here. Make sure that first crimp is copper. So we get a good connection on that one. And I'm actually going to bend this in just a little just to help it when I use these crimpers so that it uh, pinches it around. Alright, and you know what, let's try it the other way. Maybe I had it upside down. see how that crimped it. Oh, that actually did pretty damn good. Yeah, so maybe it was a uh, user error on that first one, huh? Always seems to be the problem. So we'll go ahead and flip that around. Slide that back up. I'm going to go ahead and use that to just get a good little crimp on this one here. Okay. There we go. Thing looks beautiful. All right, this is going in number two here. All right, let's try another thing. Let's see if I get it to click a little. There we go. Got that clicked in. Boom. Pull test. Always do the pull test. All right. Go on to the third and last wire. Let's cut this one off here. Alright, can't mix it up anymore, only one wire left. So now we'll go ahead and jump over, strip a little bit off of this one here. Alright, give it a little twist. And grab the little rubber boot. Install this here. Just in case you're wondering, these little boots here. Let's see, let's see if I can zoom up. Huh? So, right here. So we got the uh, the big end that's going to seal the connector, and this is the part that you're going to crimp it on right here. Um, so, and the connector itself, you can see. Goes just like this here. So we're gonna have one crimp, that front crimp, it's gonna be on the copper wire. That's what you want it to crimp on. The second one, I'm gonna slide this boot forward here, and then that's gonna hold the boot there. And that's when you do that second crimp. So just so you know how these work. All right. So let's get that first crimp ready. Slide this in place, and we're ready for that first crimp. So let's go ahead and do it. And let's see how it turns out. Yeah, that's beautiful. All right, so. Look at these uh, crimpers, man. They uh, definitely worth their money. Look how look how I crimped that. That's gorgeous. Perfectly folded over, grabbing that copper. That's exactly what you want. And now I'm gonna slide this forward. Boom! Right there. And I'm gonna do that little crimp to hold that sleeve in place. And the second one does not need to be tight. It just needs to wrap around the rubber. So don't go crazy um, and pinch it too tight. Just for reference on these ones, they got the lettering. Um, I was using the smallest one, which is E, to crimp the copper portion. And I'm using C to crimp the uh, rubber portion there or silicone or whatever they uh, make that out of. And then we're gonna listen for the click. See if I get it on this one. Yep, nice click in there. And we're all ready to go. And don't forget your lock. This little purple lock. 
it's going to make sure that these cannot be removed. And the only way to be removed would be to take this lock out and use a de-pinning tool. So, see if I remember how this went back on. Should be go across. There we go. Slide in the side and it's locked in place. And we're good to go. And boom. Locks in place. This is an extra lock that slides forward. Once you put it in, it locks in. That locks it. You can't remove it. You can't pull the pin. Nothing. And we're good to go. So now we got that converted over to the new style. Uh, I'm going to leave this open for right now until I figure out what's uh, probably going in the mass airflow, like I said. Now this TGV, we're going to work on this connector here. So, um, I'm pretty much just going to take these off. So I might just cut. Um, I'm not using the TGV, the factory TGV, so I'm just going straight into the harness. So in all reality, I just need to lose these two wires and clean it up. Um, so I think I'm just going to cut it here and that'll stay like that so let's see how close i can actually get to the connector and this one super close all right so not the greatest but i don't really want to pin it just to plug that these aren't going to do much so we can actually push some of that wire in the connector get it to seal up there we go that's nice all right so and this is Pretty much ready to go. I just need that 12 volt source of what I'm going to do with it. But yeah. yeah, Subaru timing belt tensioner pin comes in handy for everything. So, well, there we go. Should be good to go. Plug it in. Okay, we're ready. And should be able to key on the car and test it if I just put this on 12 volts. Um, and just see if it has some output. But uh, I won't have an ethanol sensor content, but it should give me some kind of output. We'll see. Uh, you know what, I'm gonna to go to the car and let's see where I can mount this to try to get a good a good setup. So we'll jump back over. All right, so I kind of jumped forward. Uh, I was, got this all ready to go. Got the uh, sensor here. Um, for the TGV sensor, got the flex steel part all done. The power wire, I ended up pulling my harness that I made for my speed density that goes into the intake temp sensor right at the uh, throttle body. And I'm gonna actually run my 12 volts, like I was saying. Uh, I'm gonna utilize the 12 volts coming out of the mass airflow sensor. Um, since I'm not utilizing that pin anymore, I went ahead and ran that wire up, as you can see, into the factory wire here. So. As soon as I plug this in the mass airflow sensor, that provides power um, as soon as the key is on to the module and it will power up the whole system and it will be 100% plug and play. Uh, I'm not going to be tapping in the rear O2 sensor. Um, obviously this will work on my vehicle if you have a mass airflow sensor. You probably could tap into it as well and it probably wouldn't have any effect. But since my pin is useless right now, I'm going to go ahead and utilize that pin and use that as power to my module so uh, I'm gonna go ahead and finish looming this up um, I'm just using a piece of uh, hose I wrap around 
and it'll conceal all the wires and keep them protected and blend in with the uh, in the engine compartment as just another vacuum line since there's so many lines everywhere but I'm gonna finish wrapping this up and probably go plug it in and probably plug the laptop in and let's see what uh, that I can actually get power and readings out of it so all right I'll keep chugging along on this all right so got it all done so obviously module flex fuel sensor it's going to input in the TGV and then the 12 volt wire runs into my speed density right here comes down all the way to the mass airflow plug pulls my 12 volts from that plug that comes directly from I believe the EFI relay um, so should be able to supply power for that no problem but this is my plug and play flex fuel kit that I'm going to put on and I guess your biggest concern is where you're inputting it as long as you input it in the TGV you can grab your 12 volts from anywhere flex fuel sensor or ethanol sensor like I said is wired up correctly to 12 volts ground and the output so I'm going to go ahead and plug this on the car even though I can't run fuel through it right this second uh, I want to actually see if I get any readout because there should be even if there's no fuel uh, I think like 0.5 volts coming out of there and I want to make sure that gets powered into there so we'll see if I uh, if I can read any of that all right so I just uh, crudely hooked it up real quick so module right here uh, plugged into the TGV connector that it wasn't doing anything obviously the 12 volt wire going into my speed density little mini harness that I made that runs down plugs in to your mass airflow sensor there and everything's powered up everything's working when this detects uh, no ethanol it's at 0.5 volts and just for reference I have a old married access port but you can see there my TGV 0.5 volts so uh, fuel pressure is on the left ethanol is on the right but just use that just to watch real quick the voltage but uh yeah everything's powered up everything's working so I'll go ahead and mount everything where I want it to mount nice and clean and uh, work on those fuel lines next and uh, hopefully get this thing all up and going so so yeah that should do it for today um, the fuel line should be pretty straightforward um, I just wanted to get that wiring all done but uh, yeah I'm using that harness for the fuel pressure sensor um, I got the two connectors here to make a new harness um, since that harness was from my other kit um, so yeah everything's going pretty good so I'm gonna call that a wraps for tonight and uh, get this video up but yeah I mean if you guys have any questions or anything just uh, follow along and hit me up let me know I'm always willing to help with whatever I can and uh, hopefully we can get this thing fully set up on a final flex fuel tune and not have to worry about the dual maps so when I do fill up with 50% ethanol like I did several other times that I think or somewhere around there that it would uh, automatically adjust but until then see you guys on the next one and hopefully get some more content uh, I'm trying to get some motivation to get this one together because uh, I definitely want to be driving that around um, but yeah, other than that, I'll see you guys uh, on the next video and hopefully get some finalization on this uh, fuel system and uh, see if I actually pull the rails off. I might end up putting the dampeners that I have, the radium dampeners in here, um, see if it smooths out the, uh, I don't hear any pulsations anymore, uh, but it definitely could utilize those dampeners with the uh, larger injectors. So. All right, I'll see you guys next time.